another video, Rush SRT back at it again. Now, uh, today's video, we're doing something a little different, but today I'm answering a pretty popular question that I see on the channel, and that is whether you should buy a used Hellcat or a new Scat Pack. Now, I get where the confusion is. Obviously, Hellcat prices have kind of come down in the uh, past year or so, so Hellcats are a lot more affordable now, uh, now that they're kind of a little under the uh, $50,000 range. And if you think of what you're getting, it's uh, not a bad deal at all. So today I figured I'd list some of the pros and cons of owning a used Hellcat versus buying a new Scat Pack and help you make that decision if you are in the market uh, looking to maybe upgrade from a Scat Pack to, to a used Hellcat or if you're even looking to get into a Challenger from a completely different band, let's say a Mustang or a um, German car, who knows, right? So. We're gonna list the pros and cons of the Hellcat first, and then I wanna get into the pros and cons of owning the uh, Scat Pack. And then finally, I'm gonna go ahead and tell you uh, what my advice would be and what I would do if I was in your situation. So how does that sound? Good? All right, let's jump right into it. So first things first, let's get into the pros. So some of the pros of getting a Hellcat use, obviously, is you're not gonna get hit with depreciation, so you save a bunch of money there. Uh, you get the Hellcat uh, with 707 horsepower for the price of a Scat Pack, another big pro. Um, you know, you can uh, easily modify the Hellcat since uh, you're not going to be too worried about, you know, warranty and all that other stuff that you would with a new car. So the car is already broken in. You can start modifying it from day one. And uh, finally, it's uh, a lot more car for the money than a Scat Pack. So you, you're getting a lot more. Your money's going a lot further. So now let's get into the cons. So some of the cons of uh, getting the Hellcat over a Scat Pack would definitely be that. Uh, it's a lot more uh, expensive to, to operate, so you're going to have you know additional fuel costs, you're going to go through more tires, more brakes, uh, maintenance probably is going to be a little more, uh, so is insurance and registration every year. So those are kind of some of the things that will cost you a little more, so you want to go ahead and account for that uh, before jumping into a uh, used Hellcat. Uh, also, you want to keep in mind that whoever bought that Hellcat before you may have driven it very hard. There could be additional damages that you have to factor in uh, into your ownership because uh, nobody buys a Hellcat to sit there and look at it. So probably that person drove it hard and uh, you might be kind of picking up uh, after where they left off in terms of maintenance and preventative maintenance and all that other stuff. So keep that in mind. Um, now, some of the tips I would give is to avoid the 2015 year. So you want to look into something in 2016, 2017. Uh, 2015 was the first generation. Uh, usually when there's a first generation for a vehicle, you're going to have a lot of problems. So you kind of want to avoid that. Um, avoid the manual transmission because uh, when you add that kind of power with the manual transmission, it might equal uh, you know, some problems for you and additional costs versus the 8-speed. I think it handles it a little better. Uh, with the torque management, everything like that. So that's something to, to keep in mind. So those are some of the pros and cons of owning a used Hellcat. Now I wanna go ahead and get into the pros and cons of a Scat Pack. So the pros of a uh, Scat Pack or a new car is obviously that it's gonna be um, you know more affordable in terms of uh, cheaper running costs. So less you know fuel since it has four, uh, four cylinder deactivation. Uh, smaller brakes if you get the four piston, so it's going to be cheaper on the brakes. And uh, insurance and registration are obviously going to be a little cheaper as well. Uh, some of the other pros, uh, you're going to get the more updated version of the car, so obviously there's some small changes that happen for the 2019 year, so you'll be able to experience those when you buy the new car. You're going to have full warranty, so peace of mind driving it as hard as you can and you won't have to worry about anything. You know, bumper to bumper warranty for 36,000 miles is pretty nice on a 500 horsepower uh, car, so that's pretty cool. So uh, now let's uh, kind of get into the cons of buying a new car, and obviously is that depreciation that you're gonna get hit with the first two years, so you're gonna lose a lot of money there. Um, you're not gonna get as much power as uh, the Hellcat, and if you are uh, in it for the horsepower, it's not very easy to mod, where the Hellcat is a lot easier to mod and make po uh, power out of. So. Those are kind of some of the cons that I've seen with uh, owning a kind of a Scat Pack uh, over a Hellcat. So now what should you do if you are looking to uh, you know, get into a new car? What would I do myself? So obviously I've had the SRT. I've had it for about a year and a half now. And uh, for me, if I was to rebuy a car again, it'd definitely have to be the Hellcat. I couldn't get another SRT. I like to mix things up and try new things. But if it's your first time getting into a high horsepower car, then definitely I think the Scat Pack is more than enough. 
Um, and it's a very well-rounded vehicle, especially if you don't have a daily driver. So if you don't have a daily driver, the Scat Pack would be my go-to because uh, I think it would be very, uh, very good for daily driving. Uh, if the Hellcat, if you have a daily driver, then the Hellcat is a great choice because you're not going to put all that wear and tear into it. It's not going to cost you as much money since you're not driving it every single day and dealing with the maintenance and the costs of putting that many miles on your car. So that's a big kind of uh, determining factor for me. So if it's my own car and it's the only car I have, I would go with the Scat Pack. I think it's very well-rounded. It's more than enough than what I need every single day. And I, at the same time, I get to have fun with it. If it's not your only car, it's a weekend car, it's a fun car, go for the Hellcat, enjoy that. Um, and it's not gonna cost you as much. So if you are looking to get a used Hellcat, I, like I said, avoid the 2015 year. Try to get something 2017 or 2016 and under 15,000 miles. Uh, definitely do a history report, do your thorough inspection on it. And if you can get any type of coverage in terms of like a powertrain coverage, extended warranty, anything of that sort, I would pick one up. Uh, with the money you saved, you should be able to put a thousand or two into that extended warranty and have that peace of mind that your blower is not gonna go out a couple thousand miles into owning the car. And uh, also do a pre-purchase inspection, please. You know, this is a vehicle you don't wanna cheap out on. You already saved all that money, make sure you get a good deal and uh, you know, pick it up from a good state as well, obviously. So don't go to a state with a lot of winter because the winter, as you guys know, the salts will eat the bottom end of the car and make it rust really quick. So that would be kind of uh, my advice to anyone getting into a new kind of Hellcat or uh, you know, or a new Scat Pack or a used Hellcat. Uh, I think some people are generally scared of getting into a used Hellcat, and I understand where the you know the worry is. But I think if you do your homework, you do a pre-purchase inspection and you also uh, make sure that the car doesn't have a lot of miles, you should be good to go. I've seen some very clean examples online on Auto Trader that are going for under $50,000 with you know close to eight to 9,000 miles. So I don't think that's too bad, um, especially if the car checks out and it's all clean and you know it hasn't had any major engine mods done to it. You don't wanna get a car that's modified, get something that's stock because if you pick up someone else's project, you will be dealing with the, you know, anything, any shortcomings that they, they have uh, caused and uh, you don't wanna be left holding the bag. So that has kind of been it for uh, this video. I just wanted to jump on here today, give you guys a little bit of insight, answer that question. Uh, I would probably get a used Hellcat if uh, I got rid of Sideboo and kind of upgraded to, to a used Hellcat, but I would want something that's 2017 with eight to 9,000 miles I would do all my homework on it, check the car facts, get the car inspected multiple times, make sure everything's good, drive it. Uh, don't buy a car without driving it, especially a performance vehicle like this. Uh, things do happen. These cars sometimes can be hiding, uh, you know, like mysterious problems. So you wanna be sure that you're not the one left holding the bag. Alrighty guys, so I figured before I let you go, let me go ahead and show you some of the examples I found online of very clean cars, very good deals. So uh, let's go ahead and check it out. So all I did was pretty much jump on Auto Trader, and uh, I did a search. Um, this is obviously throughout the country, so it's not just here in California. But I put under 15,000 miles, uh, and here are some of the ones I found. So obviously I would avoid the uh, 2015 year. That was the first year of the, the Hellcats, and kind of look at stuff like this. So here we have a 2016 uh, Hellcat Challenger. Uh, it's has 5,714 miles and they're asking 47,991. So pretty, pretty decent price. Right underneath it is another one with 8,295 miles going for 45,000 right here. So, uh, you know, that's a pretty good deal right there as well. There's another one, 11,919 miles. It has, uh, they're asking 45,996. Another one underneath it for 7,000 miles that has uh, their asking price is 46. So uh, you can see here pretty quickly that uh, the prices are actually really reasonable and uh, pretty affordable for what it is. Obviously, I haven't seen these cars personally, so I don't know exactly what state they're in or anything like that. But um, just judging based off of like what uh, the asking price is and how many miles they have, uh, they seem to be pretty decent deals. So uh, I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you are stopping by for the first time, please consider subscribing. Drop a like on this video if you found it informative. 
And uh, I will see you tomorrow. Rush SRT signing out. I'll see you guys later. Peace.